Welcome to Transition Tuesdays for this Tuesday, March the 7th, 2023. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here, ladies and gentlemen. Transition Army, I'm so glad you could be here. I'm quite aware that you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me. I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friends, on this kind of cold... Ah, dreary, not so much dreary, but it's windy night here in New York City. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, you know, we're going to have an action-packed show once again, my friends. But before I start the show, I always like to state my intentions. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transition. So that's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. That's what we do here. And I'll also give you updates, too, in the MAC conference, okay? My alma mater, you see that where it is? That's my alma mater. That's where I went to, right? My alma mater started the MAC conference this year, this, this, today, the MAC conference in the right to go to the NCAA tournament started today. On the women's side, the women played already. They just beat St. Peter's. So shout out to the Lady Jays with Coach V there. Shout out to the Lady Jays on their march to try to win the MAC Conference. They came up short last year. They lost in the championship game. I believe it was in overtime. They lost. But now they're coming back with a vengeance. And they won today. So shout out to the Lady Jays of Manhattan College, man. Shout out to them. And also, the men play this evening. They play against Marist College. And uh, we got Coach Stores is still there. He still has that interim tag there. We'll see what goes on. Hopefully we can get a win under our belts. And again, these guys have a great opportunity to tell their story. Their story. Their narrative. They have an opportunity to have a chance to tell this great story that can take place if they win the MAC tournament this year on the men's side. So, those are the updates. That's all I got so far, all right? <laughs> As we enter champ week, they call it on ESPN, all these championship games from these other leagues and conferences outside of, you know, teams you probably never even heard of. But this is always a great time of the year. It's the best time of the year for me, personally. The best time of the year. Man, I tell you, I tell you. But let's start the show, guys. Let's start the show, ladies and gentlemen. See if anybody's checking in. Nobody just yet. That's okay. But let's start the show. Wanted to talk about, and like I posted earlier, about Chris Rock. Who saw Chris Rock's Netflix special, Selective Outrage, on Saturday? And it was a live event. Never been done before on Netflix. Never been done before. It was amazing. I thought it was brilliant. You know, I thought it was so brilliant what took place there with Chris Rock. Almost one year, last year... Almost to the day when he did the uh, the special about the infamous slap from Will Smith, and boy did my guy Chris Rock address the topic, the elephant in the room. All right, let me just read a couple articles, man. So I looked up, took the liberty, took uh, to see a couple articles and see what people's take was. It what 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 was their take on the whole situation? What went down there? Before I could do that. Like to shout out my guy Cliff on the check in. What's going on, Cliff? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Cliff is my guy, Chris's good friend. And I know Chris ain't going to be here to join us because Chris, Uncle Smoothie, normally does. But Uncle Smoothie is on the call tonight. He's doing the Manhattan College game on ESPN. Plus. That's what he does. That's what we do here. <laughs> so, Chris Rock. So Chris Rock went straight for the juggler in his new stand-up special mocking Will Smith for his wife's Jada Smith, Pickett Smith's infamous entanglement with her son's friend in the couple's public discussion about the affair. Okay, hold on one second. See if anybody else is checking in real quick before I continue on. <laughs> this clip says whoop whoop. <laughs> Good having you, Cliff. So, okay, so Chris Rock went on to say, and I quote, okay, and, and these things are quoted here, I'm not going to use the explicit language, but you, you haven't understand what I'm saying uh, if you haven't seen the special just yet on Netflix. So, uh, Chris Rock says, Will Smith practices selective outrage, and that was the name of the uh, actual special, selective outrage, okay, um, 
in which in which Rock told his audience in the special, in which he talks about getting slapped by Will Smith while he was on stage at last year's Academy Awards. Okay, it's quoted by saying, Will Smith practiced selective outrage because everybody knows what the F happened. Everybody that really knows, knows I had nothing to do with that S. I didn't have any entanglements. Ooh, that drew a rush, that drew a, 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 a little arouse, a, a astounding resoundment of the crowd when he said that. And he went on to say, and for people that don't know what everybody knows, his wife was effing his son's friend, okay? Now, again, I'm not going to be explicit, but you know what the idea was, okay? Now, I normally would not talk about this S for, for some reason, but they put this out on the internet, all right? So, let me continue on reading, right? So, uh, it talks about how Jada Pickett Smith, right, um, and in 2021, she admitted having an affair with August Alcina. August Alcina is the R&B singer um, from New Orleans. You know, that doesn't mean anything, but he's from New Orleans. And, um, you know, he, she said that uh, she confirmed her relationship with the singer in the conversation with Will Smith on Red Table Talk. That's her own show that she has on Facebook. And she went on to say, I got into a different kind of entanglement with August, the actress revealed, while also admitting she and Smith, meaning Will Smith, was separated at the time. She further clarified, it was a relationship, absolutely. Okay, this entanglement is a relationship. Okay. Now, Chris Rock went on to say, um, he says, I had no idea, this is on a special, I had no idea, I have no idea why these two talented people would do something that's so, that so effing low down. <laughs> Rock continued during his Netflix stand-up, what the F? <laughs> and this is key here, and I want to read this, and we're going to break this down, we're going to pull back the curtain on this, okay? Rock went on to say, we all, we have all been cheated on. Everybody in here has been cheated on. None of us have ever been interviewed by the person that cheated on us on television. All right? What the F would do, would do that S? Now, here's the key that we're going to really dive deep into. All right? What Chris Rock said. He went on to say, saying that Jada Pickett Smith says, he says, she heard him, meaning she, Jada Pickett Smith, hurt her husband, Will Smith, more, way more than he hurt Chris Rock. Okay, that's deep. Okay, I'll say that again. She hurt him way more than he, meaning Will Smith, hurt Chris Rock. That is deep. That is trauma, ladies and gentlemen. That is trauma. Trauma all the way around from Will Smith. You know, the trauma, because again, um, Chris Rock said in the special, you know, during this entanglement and this interview situation, everybody was dissing Will Smith. You know, everybody was dissing Will Smith. And, and you know, and, and Will Smith didn't do anything about it. So here's Chris Rock. You know, he, he does this stand up, and then next thing you know, Will Smith goes after him. And and, and, and Chris Rock made a great point, and, uh, and it makes sense, too, if you think about it. He said it was really corny about him going after him because he went after somebody he could beat, you know? And that's what usually the case is. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure Will Smith would have went after a Dave Chappelle, or let's say The Rock delivered that joke. Do you think he would have went after him? No. He has selective outrage, like Chris Rock's brilliantly said. You know, he has selective outrage with this whole process, this whole scenario. You know, and that was whack. And he's absolutely right. That was whack that he did that. You know, but that's deep what he talked about. You know, Jada Pickett Smith's comments hurt Will Smith more did it at actually the punch that he took. <laughs> he said he, he took a punch like Pacquiao. He took it like a champ, like Pacquiao, you know? And, and that's so true. And that's a traumatic event. You know, all that trauma. 
you know, all are coming out. You know, but again, to this day, like and I said that before when it actually happened, man, what professionalism by Chris Rock, man, who able, you know, he knew it was at stake if he did retaliate. You know, people say, why didn't he retaliate? The guy, hey, man, you know, he's smart about it. You know, a lot was at stake. How about if he would have been retaliated? You know how much the imagery on that would have looked? Terrible. So I'm glad he didn't do that. But a couple of things to keep in mind. So you got these traumas that's still going on to today. And I'm sure Will Smith has some trauma still going on today as well. And I heard some people say, oh, my God, let's see who, how, uh, you know, um, Jada Pickett Smith or Will Smith going to respond to this. My recommendation would be just let Sleeping Dogs lie. It's over with. You know, it should be done. And as Chris Rock eloquently said in the, in the speech, almost speech, in the stand-up, he, he said, clear as day, listen, Jada Pickett Smith, you started it. I'm going to finish it. And keep in mind, guys, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, if you notice, where was this special filmed? This live special film in Baltimore, Maryland. You guys know the significance of Baltimore, Maryland? Well, if you didn't know, that's the home of Jada Pickett Smith. So, he start, she started it, he ended it there. It should be done. You know, you can't mess with a comedian, especially a thought-provocative comedian like Chris Rock. As we saw, here's a guy who... Who held up for the bag because he didn't mention this at all about the slap. He didn't address it at all. Continued to do his stand up throughout the country. Then again, I've heard that Netflix paid him 20 mil for this. So he got the bag to hold out to share his story, to tell his truth. That is brilliant. Very much so brilliant. And speaking of brilliant, we got Felicia on the check in from The Rock joining us. What's going on, Felicia? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, man, you know, everything was well calculated. I thought it was brilliant. Chris Rock was does what he does. Very thought provocative guy. You know what I mean? He hit home. You know, it had to hit home. You know, let's just hope nobody retaliates. It should be done now. It should be a done deal. You know, um, that's my take on it. You know, I, I, you know, Will Smith, you know, again, let's sleep in Thor's line. Just, that should be it with it. That should be it with it, okay? But we'll, we shall see. We shall see. But again, it was so brilliant, man. Selective outrage. If you haven't seen it, check it out. You know, tell, think for you. You know, you can, you know, say it for yourself. You know, I know a lot of people will say like Chris Rock used vulgar language. You know, when describing Jada Pickett Smith. Hey, man. You know, you can't. You don't know how you would respond. You know, this is some this traumatic event that he held on for like for a year. So you know, what I mean, uh, you know. He, he just gave it, he, he's just comedian, he just does what he does. <laughs> he just does what he does. And and I think it hit home, and um, I think it was well done. And uh, again, he got the big bag for $20 million for that. $20 million for a night's work. That's not bad. It's not a bad gift for an hour's work. I tell you. Man, and getting his point across to the masses. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> hey, let's transition to Creed. Creed 3. I just recently saw Creed 3. And Creed 3 is a movie that is directed by Michael B. Jordan, who made his directorial debut on this movie. Okay, it's the um, the trilogy of Creed, you know, uh, Adonis Creed. And um, one of the stars is Jonathan Majors. Now, this guy, Jonathan Majors, this guy's hot, man. I see this guy in the Ant-Man. I love this guy in the heart of they fall. This guy's an up-and-coming guy. He does his thing. He does his. He does a great job in the movie too. It had a feel like he, his character, and it could have been. And I think a little bit. You know, not to knock the movie at all, because I will not knock the movie. I thought it was a great movie. I think everybody should go see it. But I think they just left a little bit off the bone. They left a little bit of meat on the bone there for that movie for me. Um, I mean, I, I'm a storyteller, so I, I just try to picture what would I do with that movie. But. Um, just a little bit left, little left a little meat on the bone for me a little bit. Okay, don't get me wrong. Love the movie. Definitely go check it out. Definitely support Michael B. Jordan. Here's a guy who doesn't forget where he came from in Newark. You know, had those games with the with, um, HBCUs and the NBA and stuff like that, man. This guy is a true guy, man. This guy's like, you know, black Hollywood personified, man. This guy, this is young black Hollywood. This guy's doing his thing. Jonathan Majors as well. 
But the one thing I could have saw, maybe if Jonathan Major could have been even more of a villain, just like Clubber Lang in Rocky Three, he had that presence like that to make that happen. Ah, it just didn't happen. But again, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusion when you go see the movie. Definitely go see the movie. I love Jonathan Majors. I think this guy's an up and coming guy, a star on the rise, you know, and I loved it. I, I, you know, I loved, I loved Creed 3, you know, but again, for me, just left a little bit of meat on that bone there. Oh, man. But hey, go check it out. Definitely go check it out, man. Yeah, you won't be disappointed, you know. Um, um, Tessa Thompson was great too. I like the way they introduced the, uh, the daughter, uh, the daughter who's deaf, and I think she is deaf in real life as well. So that was a great thing. The movie is full of great messages. That's what I liked about the movie. Full of great messages, great, great messages. And one of the messages that you know I can give to you guys, and you know I'm not spoiling anything, but just like letting go. Sometimes you just gotta let go, man. Let go, let go, let God, as they say, you know. But sometimes you just gotta let go of things. To free yourself, to free your, to free your inner self, you know, it's for you to have peace, to have peace of mind. Sometimes you just gotta let go. Sometimes you gotta let go. And speaking of let go, <laughs> well, not let go. I want to know why this guy is on it. We got the voice of the men's and women's basketball teams at Manhattan College. We got Uncle Smoothie on the check. And what's going on, Smoothie? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We also got my man Matthew on the check-in. What's going on, Mel, Mel, uh, Matthew? Welcome, 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 my friend. Now, Uncle Smoothie, what in the world are you doing on here? You said that the MAC tournament on ESPN Plus, Canisius by Mount St. Mary. Okay, so Smooth, hey, man, I'm glad you're on. I appreciate you, Smooth, for coming on. So Smooth is doing that game. Smoothie, what time is that game, sir, so everybody can check you out on ESPN Plus? What time is that game so we can check you out? And I appreciate you checking us out here, Smoothie. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you, man. Man, so we'll get that update to you guys. I'll definitely get that to you when Chris responds. Or no one, Chris, no, as, I know, as I know Chris, Chris is probably just checked in, checked in, and then checked out. He's probably, he's probably being mic'd up right now, knowing Chris. He's probably getting some um, makeup done and the whole nine, you know, the whole nine. You know, that, that's Uncle Smoothie, you know, check it in and check it out. <laughs> hey, Matthew, glad to see you as well, too, my friend. Glad to see you as well, man. So that's Creed 3. I recommend you check that out. And I want to talk briefly before we head on out about John ja Morant. Really quick, um, I know he's taking a couple of days off. It's not a suspension that he's having. Uh, I saw the statement with him saying about the, um, you know, stresses. Guy's only 23 years old. A lot of pressure's going on, I'm sure. You know, I, I'm a little bit like um, like my guy. What's my guy's name? Um, he just, he mentioned it because uh, I want to give him the total credit. If you don't see John Morant the rest of this year, I would not be surprised as well. Um, oh my God, my God, my man is 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 escaping me right now. But he mentions that you know John Morant might not be back the rest of the year. I kind of agree with that. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes a long hiatus um, because I think we should be really checking at this this young man's um, mental health. You know, he even talked about the stresses of it. Uh, the stresses of, of what's going on in his life. The guy's only 23 years old. You know, there's a lot of stresses, man, what's going on. And I loved, and I don't know if you guys got a chance to, to hear it, but what Jalen Rose talked about with John Moran. And he talked about the main thing he talked about was, you know, John Moran is now a leader. You become like the leader of your crew, like the people who you with. You become the leader. And what happens when you're a leader in these situations you know, the rest of your people, your crew, they follow your lead, you know? So this is a sometimes a tough transition, especially for young people, you know, to become that leader, the leader of who runs with you, and they're going to follow your lead and what you do. So again, I'm not going to be the person to, to say, you know, like ditch your crew or what have you. No, I think what Jalen Rose said was, was really important was like, you know, when now you become the leader of it, so you have to make better choices in life too. And a lot of it has to stem from mental, mental health, mental health issues. I mean, people are more concerned about what this guy has to lose. And, you know, he, just, he has a new sneaker deal that just came out and, and all this stuff. I think he signed an endorsement deal with Powerade, too. And, 
you know, all that's great, but we really have to really be concerned on how is the guy actually doing, you know, but with all these, you know, take it off his shirt in a strip club, <laughs> you know, posing with a gun, you know, something might not be right mentally that's going on there. So I will, I, I'm from the belief that John Moran should take as much time as he needs. You know, if it if it means the rest of the season, you know, Bomani Jones, that's the guy's name. Yeah, Bomani Jones. Shout out to Bomani Jones, who I, I wholly, I, I really subscribe to what, what he talked about. Maybe he might be missing this whole year. Would not be surprised. So that was Bomani Jones. This can't be just now. But, you know, I think we should really be concerned about his mental health, his mental space where he is right now. You know, forget about how much he can lose or, or his people. You know what I mean? We got to worry about the person, John Moran, and not the basketball player. So, you know, I wish him most, mo the most success. Take your time, young man, in doing that. But I have one guy who I think can help in this matter. This guy was a superhero. And this guy had a similar, very similar, you know, situation that's went on. And we saw how this guy matured and matured into the man he is now. And I would say that would be Allen Iverson, the answer. Man, if John Moran can maybe possibly talk to somebody who's been through this process, who can tell you what can happen if you make these wrong choices. You know, Allen Iverson was a guy back in the days who ran with a crew of cats. You know, entourage, they called them posses back in the day. He had that. You know, now nah, he don't roll like that. You know, he's, he's really evolved. So a guy like that, an OG like that, an Allen Iverson, who's been through the rigors, there's so much more. You know, what better guy than AI to reach out to John Moran? Maybe I'm, I'm sure he has because the brotherhood of, of, of the NBA is strong like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has reached out to him. So, you know, maybe he could give him some great insight. But, you know, I pray for that guy. I hope he, hope he does well. You know, um, don't worry about the basketball. We got to get you right first, man. Got to get you right first. And just like Jalen Rose said, it's all about being a leader. It's all about being a leader. And you become that leader of your crew. And the people follow your lead. So you got to watch how you lead. You know, you got to lead wisely. Lead with strategy. You know, you got to do that. You know, and it might take a little, this might be a little bump in the road for you. You know, Mr. Morant. But hey, it can be done. Talented guy, individual, but I care more for his mental health than anything else at this time. I really do. Really, really do. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, if we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory for being here, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you guys an applause for celebrating your victory. I'm gonna give you <laughs> applause for you celebrating your victory by you joining me today. That's a victory for me, and hopefully it's a victory for you as well. So celebrate your victory. <laughs> Let's get to my theme music. Here we go. Yes, yes. Ho. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army. I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for you watching Transition Tuesdays. Each and every Tuesday, I thank you guys so much. Man, oh man, I tell you, you can catch us on our YouTube channel, Transition Tuesdays, okay? You can like and subscribe, okay? You can if you like. You can like and subscribe on our channel, okay? Make sure you do that as well too, okay? And just go to Transition Tuesdays. If you haven't been following me already, you can follow me on Instagram at Russ Will Transitions. That's Russ Will Transitions with an S. Follow me and I guarantee, guarantee, I'll follow you back. Okay, so make sure you do that as well. Want to shout out our corporate sponsor, Sweet Candy Cafe, located in downtown Lumberton, North Carolina. They just had a great event. The, um, oh, Rumba on the... On the law, I forget the name of it. Please help me out. What's the name of the with the thing we you just took took place at what just what just took place in Lumberton, North Carolina? Rumble in the lumber? Lump oh my god. Oh my <laughs> I'm bugging out right now. But hey, Sweet Candy Cafe, the home, the home of man, the home of confectionery goodness. Make sure you go to after the show. We're almost done. So make sure you go to sweetcandycafe.com to order your confectionery goodies, okay? 
That's at SweetCandyCafe.com. All right, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, as we say in parting, happy transitioning, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless. And let's go, Jaspers. <laughs> oh, before I go, Rumba on the Lumber. Thank you so much, Felicia. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, guys, take care. <laughs>